How many sides does a, 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 a cube have again? So we need to solve a problem. We need to design something that has six sides. And we have to make it so that it sticks together, right? There's a special type of joint um, called a finger joint. And that's where you design something so that two things fit together. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to show you how to do a whole cube, but I'm going to show you how you can create two squares that plug together, OK? So what I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm not going to change the, the stroke width on this to um, 0 0.001, just because I want you to be able to see the lines when I draw them, OK? So does anyone remember in Adobe Illustrator how I can make it, um, if I want to make a, a square that's exactly one by one inch? Ooh, What's the fastest way to do that? Ruler. Emily? Um, so, uh, put the rulers up. Yeah, okay, so that's one way. I'm going to put up my rulers. So, say view, rulers, and show rulers. I might have only shown this little trick to a couple of people. Maya. You hold shift, and then it tells you, like, the size when you make it bigger and smaller. Okay, that's one way. So, if I drag it out, it's all wobbly and rectangular, but as soon as I hit shift, it's a perfect square. I didn't and know. if I go really slowly, it's one by one, but there's an even faster way. So that's a one by one square. Oh, I know how. Even faster? Yeah. Um, you can, you, well, you click on the mouse thingy, right. just like the click. Exactly. So watch this. If I just single click, watch what happens. It, it brings up a little dialog box and it asks me, how big do I want it to be? I want it to be one by one. And then I say, okay. Do you see how easy that was? But why is it kind of now, if I were to click again, over here, it remembers what the setting was for the last time. Hey, by the way, what does that green line mean? Intersect. What does it mean? Parallel. Yeah, so if I, if I were to create a cube here, its upper left corner would be on the same line as the upper left corner or the top side of the, uh, the other square. So I click one by one. Okay, so let's say I wanted to create a cube with finger joints, or not a cube, I wanted to just create two squares with finger joints that would join them together. Okay. The material we're working with is very approximately about a quarter inch in width. So when I create my finger joints, I want to create finger joints that are about a quarter inch in width so that they don't stick out like that when we join them. And they don't look like a they don't look like a log house. They don't look like a log house. You know, sometimes you might want to do that for fun. Like to make like a log house out of wood? Yeah, if you were designing a log house. Or, um, Miss uh, Dr. Conlon, she ran a uh, really neat project this summer where they created doll houses. Was, any, was anyone part of that? Maybe you couldn't because you were going from grade five to six. But they made some amazing stuff. And, and maybe you could make a log doll house. Are they in the junior school now? I think we saw them. Mm, that is from someone else. But, okay, so let me show you how I'm going to do this. So, does anyone remember how thick did I just say the material was that we're creating? 0.001? 0 .001? No? Quarter inch. Quarter inch oh. material. Okay. And if I was to put quarter inch into uh, decimals instead of a fraction, what would that be? 0.25. Yeah, 0 0.25. Thank you. So, watch this. If I click on this corner here, and then put 0 0.25 by 0 0.25, just like you suggested. I have Whoa. my first finger joint. Now I'm going to put these two squares up side by side. Intersect. Just like that, so they intersect. And then I'm going to just go down. Every time there's an intersection here, I'm going to draw another finger. One. How many am I going to be able to fit in here? Four. Four. Yeah, because we split it into quarters, right? Ah. That's exactly what that means, right? That's what a fraction is. One over four, so that means I can I can put four in here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we have four squares. Now here's what I'm going to do. The way that finger joints work is if this was one square and this was another square, this one would have a finger joint here, and the next one wouldn't because they need to go together like this. Okay. Like a log house. Like a log house, right? Kind of like. Kind of like scissors or a zipper, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Do that with your hands. I can. Exciting. Even if you're filming with your iPad, 
You can imagine. You can look at someone else's hands. Okay? So what we need is we need our square on the left to have finger joints that are the opposite to the one on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my black arrow here, and I can select multiple objects in Adobe Illustrator by using my shift button. So check it out. I can select that one. I know it's selected because it has sort of a blue highlight around it, and it has anchors. So I'm going to go one, two, and three. And then I'm going to move them apart with my arrow. Okay? So you can see how those two pieces would just fit together, right? Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm going to do. Group? Yeah, you got it. Object yes. group, effect, pathfinder, and add. There's one. Whoa. Whoa. Object, group, effect, pathfinder, uh, and add. So now I have two separate pieces that if I were to laser cut them out, I could put them at 90 degrees, fit them into each other, add a little bit of glue, and they would stick. They don't pull apart easily. Okay, so I've got some finger joints down there. So here's what I'm going to ask you. If I was going to create a cube, I would need to do this. I would need to create how many of these types of things? Six. Six. Now, I just want to show you another thing here. I'm going to go and I'm going to put a piece directly below here, one by one. I'm going to move it apart a little bit. And I'm also going to do this. So I'm going to add some finger joints there. But these shapes are rectangles. No, they're trying. I mean, they're squares. Square. Do they look like squares? Oops. They are squares. They are. So if you look really carefully, I hear some people saying they're rectangles, they're squares. So this part is a square. These parts are other squares that are attached to that square. So this is a square here that has two quarter inch squares stuck to it. So this side here is longer than this side by a quarter inch. When you put them all together though, we're going to have finger joints here, here, and here. Every single side of the cube needs to stick to another side of the cube, right? Okay, so check it out. I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to push this button. And how big is my finger joint? 0.25. Right, is that the thickness of our material? 25%. Yeah, and now I'm going to do this how many more times? Four. How many more times? Three. Three. Yeah, I already have one. Two. Three. And four. Four. Okay, and like before, if I want to, I can... Make sure this all lines up by dragging up my other square. Okay. And then I want to choose this. And what button do I use on my keyboard if I want to select more than one thing? Okay. I want to choose these two pieces and then I move them apart. So it's kind of like scissors. So cool. Okay. So they look like teeth now. And now, watch this object. Actually, I'm going to show you a different way here because. I want you to understand how these groups work a little bit better. Now, this is going to be really hard to see on your video, so you want to watch this with your real human eyes, not through your iPad eyes. Okay? So, I'm going in. Alright, so the last thing I want to show you here is, um, is how we can get these two squares to become a part of this shape. So, you can see right now, we grouped together this square and these smaller squares. And if I look in here, I can, so this is my layers option. If I click there, I can see that inside layer one, I have two paths, which are these squares, and a group, which is this. I can see which ones are which by turning them on and off like this. I can see that's the group. It disappears when I push the little eyeball. And you see this arrow here, I can use that to expand the group further. So if I push there, I can see that this group is made up of three different paths, and I can turn them on and off to see which one is which. Now I've already applied the Pathfinder add effect to this to create one continuous shape, so all I need to do to add these two squares to that same continuous shape is to add them into this group. And the way I do that is I can literally just pick them up and drag them in, just like that. And you can see automatically they become a part of the continuous shape. And to finish up this um, 3D cube, we need pieces on every side. So what I'm going to do is get um, some on this side, and I'll do that by clicking here. And you can see what it does is it 
puts the piece inside the shape, and so I just need to drag it over here to the right, and then continue my way down. Now, if you're going to design one side of a cube and you want to be able to reuse it for all the six other sides, what's really important is that you make sure you follow a pattern as you go around. So you can hear, you can see I have a cube here, and then a space, and then a cube, and then a space, and then a cube, and a space, cube, space. So that one is a cube, or a square. I should be saying square instead of cube. So that one's a space, and that one is a space. And then I want to do the same up here. So again, when I click at the top, it puts that square below, and I just move it up, and then continue along. just like that. And again, I don't need that one. And just like I did before, I take these four paths down here, drag them into the group, and they all join and become a part of the whole shape. So because of this pattern, I can duplicate this shape five times, and I will have the five sides of my cube when I laser cut them out. So you could turn this into a dice if you wanted to, or some people turn them into like a magic eight ball, but but with six sides. So you could use the you could use the text tool to write you know put numbers on each side or whatever you want, just like this.